Hello YouTube, name's Dave. Anyway, today I'm going to share a blog that I wrote called Sasquatch Explained. It's got all kinds of interesting stuff in here. Um, I guess we'll just jump right in. Uh, every time someone gets DNA from a Sasquatch, whether it be hair, blood, or flesh, it always has the same result. Inconclusive, but mostly human DNA. Scientists don't believe there's an animal out there because scientific evidence says it's mostly human. What does mostly human mean anyway? Well, I believe it's simply human with extra bits that hasn't been categorized yet. Although there are many different kinds of folks, people tend to have the same basic shape. Europeans and Asians, for example, have human DNA with strands that makes them unique. Africans, Aztecs, are also clearly human, but unique to them in their DNA is specific strands of information that makes them who they are. Starting out kind of basic. <laughs> I have to ask the question, how many people groups had extra bits or inconclusive DNA until science came up with a nifty little box to put that information in? On that vein, and digging a little deeper, where did all of the vanished civilizations go throughout history? Surely, there are remnants. Entire civilizations can't simply vanish, can they? Yeah, I would doubt it. I'm agreeing with myself in my own blog. <laughs> People fight or flight. This has been the way of things for many millennia. What if a small group of people, a remnant, stayed hidden for thousands of years in remote areas, perpetuating a genome that is unique to them? It is easily defensible position, as people groups, like all mammals, adapt to their surroundings quickly, and traits that perpetuate survival are brought up to the forefront. This is actually a well-established scientific anomaly. Here's an idea, folks. Science is not the enemy of the Sasquatch. Many of the problem is that believers aren't looking for people. Is this really all that far-fetched? Cover a fellow like, uh, consider a fellow like Andre the Giant, cover him with hair, and what do you have? Seriously, what's the difference? Assuming that these people are apes simply because they're covered in hair, they walk with an awkward gait, is nonsense. Apes don't have flat feet, or feet at all for that matter. Humans, on the other hand, do. Um, on a side note that I'm not going to dwell into, but I'll briefly mention, uh, this isn't the first creature that's been identified as inconclusive human DNA. Uh, one of the more famous ones is the alien baby corpse found in South America. Science isn't taking it seriously because it's mostly human. Okay, then what if they're right? Another example are the little people in northern Russia that run locals off. <laughs> That's true, there seem to be aggressive little people up there. Of course, you know, Russia, who knows what's up there? I mean, they got land on top of land and uh, mountain ranges they haven't even named yet. It's insane. Um, where was I? Oh, yeah. Placing any group of humans in a genetically isolated bubble will exasperate certain traits of that people group. Well, duh. This is Basic Genetics 101. I think us Homo sapiens are complicating the Sasquatch narrative with unnecessary theories. This is the main reason I believe why mainstream rejects the idea of Sasquatch altogether. Honestly, can you blame them? Um, you know, you got goofballs and witch hunters abound the internet and every time they go into the woods they come back with proof or an amazing story to tell. The Sasquatch narrative is so overrun with hoaxes it's really no wonder that most of society wants nothing to do with it. Looking at the situation logically it seems to me that it's naive at best to dismiss the idea that a large humanoid can survive and indeed thrive in huge tracts of land we homo sapiens have yet to explore. Especially if it's sentient. I'm going to scroll up a little bit here. Let's take a look at behaviors that have been noticed in various videos and sources around the internet. 
Usually when visual contact is made by both human parties, the Sasquatch will walk off. It's as if the Sasquatch wants us to follow, and when we do, our hairy brethren vanishes into the distance. Now, it seems to me that if your enemy is curious, as we are, and your children are over the ridge to the right, would you not think left knowing you will be followed? This is a classic de uh, deflection technique. Have you noticed that when humans get freaked out and run in the opposite direction of where Sasquatch is going, they end up being chased? Look over the videos, folks. It's all there. Time and time again, I've observed the same behavior. They have performed classic recon deflection techniques on us, and no one has connected the dots yet. Which is kind of sad. I believe they want us to think they're dumb animals. I think the wood knocking is another deflection technique, uh, keeping us humans busy while <clears throat> evacuating their cave perhaps, or maybe they're alerting others to our location in the simplest way possible. It's important to them, I believe, for us to think they are lesser beasts. This way, they always have the upper hand. They understand us a lot better than we understand them because we refuse to give them credit. We keep thinking of them as ape-like, for example. And that's kind of racist, and they're clearly not even close to being apes. As far as howling and throwing things go, it's important for them to keep the upper hand, and fear is an important tool in their arsenal. They know that we don't understand them, and by instilling fear, that perpetuates this misunderstanding. This technique is effective at keeping us at bay. Whether they're protecting a nearby domicile or just having fun with us, who's to say? Um... Sasquatch is using advanced and effective recon tactics against us. All Sasquatch tribes seem to be well versed in this. As long as we are looking for a big dumb ape, we will never find Sasquatch. We need to rethink this narrative. Cut out the baloney and the hoaxes and focus. Incidentally, it seems that people that show the most respect and try to understand do get closer. Thinking of the Sasquatch as an offshoot of humanity, sentient and aware, opens a lot of untapped possibilities and questions. They are clearly a xenophobic people. They seem, to, uh, they seem adept at recon and have members of their society watching out for the group during the day. It seems that they hunt at night, which provides a tactical advantage. We have never discovered a current dwelling, which tells me they're good at what they do and they have mastered their ways by now. Is there a social structure? I would imagine so. Now the warrior class uh, would be obvious, as many humans have come in contact with aggression. The recon or lookout class is more docile and adept at misdirection. The females seem to be focused on the upbringing of youth. They've been spotted uh, collecting berries and carrying around young ones. Is there a clerical class for record keeping? And what of religion? Who knows? <clears throat> are the uh, are the teepees or lean-tos that are scattered about actual attempts at shelter? Or are they some sort of crucial part of a religious ceremony? Perhaps they're just deflections so we won't find Sasquatch's actual shelter. I believe uh, that a lot of what they do is intended to confuse us as much as possible. Clearly, they don't want to be found. That in and of itself makes us all the more curious, and I think they're well aware of that too. Now, any creature that understands our mentality would want to get as far away from us as possible. <laughs> yeah. On that note, us Homo sapiens do love digging holes. We dig them for safety, logistics, stockpiles, uh, bases, bunkers, you name it. Well, considering that scientific DNA analysis does consider Sasquatch to be inconclusively human, it stands to reason that Sasquatch would make its home underground, which is a very human-like thing to do. Uh, it's really an easy bet. Huge caves with seemingly endless caverns are scattered all over the world. There are tales of explorers, from some of these caves, finding strange things very deep and out of place. 
Topside animals like deer being found in impossible locations, for example. Such things are well documented and easily found, so I won't labor the point. That just to say, the Sasquatch has discovered a system of living that promotes the safety of their society. What if there aren't any caves? What if a Sasquatch society in a swampy or sandy region that can't support underground structure? What happens when the trees vanish and there's nowhere else to go? Most woodland dwellers and animals don't have the option of accumulating themselves into our society as a result of deforestation. Um, yeah, that sentence is kind of huge, so I'm going to go ahead and read it to you again. Most woodland creatures and animals don't have the option of acclimating themselves into our society as a result of deforestation. Make yourself comfortable, have some tea, it's going to get interesting. No kidding. <laughs> My Bigfoot encounter is completely unlike any other. The location was a parking lot of a shopping center, every day for months. It was a new area outside of Orlando, Florida. Homes, malls, plazas, you name it, they were building them everywhere. All in all, the area was quite nice, although the forest took a big hit. That's progress, I suppose. I worked with a fellow, I forget his name now, aside from the other features, which I'll get into in a moment, I remember his eyes. He was a young man, about 17, um, but he had the eyes of an old sage. They were almost hypnotic. No, not almost. They were hypnotic. Always bloodshot. Almost completely red and uh, brown and black in the center. Terrifying and wise at the same time. Our job was shopping carts. We retrieved and lined them up for customers. I remember him approaching an old lady one day and asking in a deep raspy voice, May I take your cart, ma'am? <laughs> she screamed. He rolled his eyes. I laughed. I think her reaction was probably valid. <laughs> he would often murmur about not being able to find clothing that would fit. I'd say he was about 7 feet tall, uh, 700 pounds. He was fat. I mean, he was huge. His facial features were huge. His feet, I think he told me once he was in a size 26 or so. It may have been busy, busy. I think it was high 20s. Um, walking on the pavement caused him pain. At the end of the workday, he seemed done. You know, just worn out. What struck me about him even more than his features was his knowledge of history. He was fascinated with the world and would drone on about battles and who won, why the other side lost. He had many very interesting commentaries. He tried to be very friendly and personable, but he was very awkward at the same time. It seemed to me that he was really trying, putting forth a lot of effort to be this way, like a stranger in a strange land, pulling out all the stops to fit in. Honestly, I don't remember body hair. I, I know that hair is a stereotypical narrative, but that aspect never struck me. Maybe he shaved a lot. I suppose he would have to, keeping in mind that in Central Florida, waxing and the like are very common. I just didn't notice. There were so many other oddities to focus on, and at the time, I didn't think Bigfoot. I mean, who, who thinks of Bigfoot in a parking lot in the middle of a city? I mean, come on. You know. He stuck out like a sore thumb, and he knew it. But he was just normal enough to pull it off. He never spoke of his family, but his dad would drop him off to work. He drove an old Lincoln, a sailboat of a car. Dad was just as big. Uh, the beard was a bit much. If you saw that head peeking from behind a tree, you'd soil yourself. It seemed friendly, though. He said hello to me once. <sighs> you know, at the time, I just thought they were big people. Years later, I stumbled upon the Patterson video on YouTube, and it hit me. Pieces started falling together. He had a similar gait, shape, and size. I say similar because it's clear the man I work with went through a lot of trouble to appear to be as normal as possible. And he was overweight. No, that wasn't a guy in a suit in the Patterson video. I'll tell you what it was. 
the woman in the Patterson video was a person deflecting the humans in the wrong direction. <sighs> now stop calling them apes and give them a little more credit. <laughs>